Story 1. My boyfriend and I are having a hard time blending families. Me, 33 female, and my boyfriend, 35 male, both have sons near the same age. My boys are 6 and 8, his son is 8. We've been dating for a couple of months and are at a point where we're starting to be around each other's kids and are getting the kids all together to hang out. He and his sons joke in a way that I find verbally aggressive. They call each other stupid and ugly and basically verbally attack each other in what I consider to be a passive-aggressive way. I brought this up to my boyfriend and he insists they're just playing and it's all jokes. He also made it very clear that he isn't going to change anything about it either. We've gotten into a few disagreements about it because I don't care to see him interact that way with my sons. My parenting style is very different. It's softer and uplifting. We never say mean things to each other even as a joke. I understand that men and women parent differently. I know that dads typically tend to be more rough around the edges while moms are usually more nurturing in their approaches. Should I be seeing this as much of a red flag as I do? Am I overreacting? So I do feel like there's maybe a level of this that's okay. And there's a level of this that can start to very creepily move toward a line that, especially for a kid growing up around that age, this can kind of wear on them and become kind of mentally abusive. I'm not an expert in this, so I don't want to speak with authority on this stuff. But when you have this kind of stuff reiterated to you, even as a joke, as a child who is still developing, parts of that can still really stick with you in really unhealthy ways. I don't know all the facts about that, and, uh, you know, I I do playful mocking with some friends and stuff like that. That's the way we do it, though we're also, like, very over-the-top and silly about it. So I don't know, but I, I feel weird about that with kids, especially, because I feel like I've seen some kids who grew up with that kind of behavior, and they are not well-adjusted adults at all. And I feel like that, maybe that's not, that's sure that's not the whole reason, but I feel like it maybe contributed to it. So I feel like at the very least, there's some research needed about that kind of stuff. I'm sure it's out there. So go research it. Story two. Today I effed up by not realizing my stepfather never had a son. So some context first. My mother cheated on my dad with her stepfather over 10 years ago, and they've been married for seven years now. I never really gave my stepfather a chance because of that. I wasn't rude or a jerk to him, I just didn't want to go and do things with him because I felt like he ruined my parents' marriage. Anyway, I started riding motorcycles about six months ago, and he started riding them too, and I thought it was odd because he never talked about it before. Him and I have gone on a couple of rides together now, and it never hit me till now that he tried so hard to do stuff with me because he never had a son of his own. He has four daughters and then met his stepson who was just blowing him off for years. I can't believe I never realized that till today, I feel like such a jerk and that I wasted all that time with him. I hope he can forgive me someday. Sorry, I'm on mobile. First off, an important thing to realize, and a, a, a child should not be expected to have to realize this, but something you'll grow to realize is that the stepfather isn't the one who ruined the marriage. The mom cheating was also a big part of that. They both kind of did. You know, the stepfather, he definitely holds some culpability in that, you know, if he was aware that it was an affair and stuff. Whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's really nice that your stepdad was trying to connect with you. I think that's great. My stepdad and I have never really been super close. He and my mom aren't together now. They haven't been for a decade now, but I still absolutely refer to him as my stepdad. He helped to raise me. And even though we've never connected, you know, I still like to, you know, think of him as one of the father figures I had in my life. So yeah, it's nice when you get older to realize that. And hopefully, Stepdad's out there, just trying to realize, sometimes it's going to take a lot more time than you think. Story 3. I sent my child to wilderness therapy, and I'm not sorry. My daughter is a sociopath. Ever since she was a child, she never seemed normal. She was always drawn away from us and very hostile. My partner and I lock her in her room at night to protect ourselves and to make sure she doesn't get into anything dangerous to harm us. We've caught her trying to get into our gun safe, as well as multiple attempts of grabbing knives from the kitchen to try to kill our son. We have tried everything. We've given her love, attention, toys, heart-to-heart -to -heart conversations, one-on-one -on -one hangout days, and therapy. We even admitted her to a mental hospital for a year because she kept threatening to kill us and her little brother. Nothing had worked. 
Her therapist tells us everything we already do. Every other day we plan family game nights like just dance, bingo, etc. And it always ends with my daughter threatening to murder us in our sleep. She was soon in a mental facility for two years after that, and when she came home, she was somehow worse. It got to the point where I was afraid for my family's safety, especially our son. So, I looked into wilderness therapy. For anyone says it's bad, I know. I know it's bad. I know how they treat the children there. At this point, I just want my daughter gone. This family has taken enough of her abuse, and I have tried to make sure it didn't get to this point. I even asked family members if they could take her in, and they all declined because they're afraid of her and don't want to handle her. So, I admitted her, and she leaves Monday. She's 16, and will stay there until she's 18, when she can check herself out and leave. For anyone calls me a bad parent, understand that it's hard to have a child be a part of your life when they grab a knife from the kitchen in the middle of the night and try to unlock your door to kill you, or when they try to drown your other child. I understand this will be hard for her. I will always love my daughter and will miss seeing her, but she needs to know that this happens because of her actions and negligence. Yeah, I don't really feel like I can blame the parents in this situation. They were doing therapy, trying all kinds of stuff, clearly love her, and like, but that's terrifying to have your own child like grabbing knives and trying to break into your room to kill you and threatening your other child. That's terrifying. And yeah. I, I don't know what else you do. Like, I, I was very prepared to not be on this person's th side from the title, but I, I don't know what else you do in that situation. That's, yeah, I mean, protect yourselves and your other child. And, you, I mean, the bad thing is sending her to wilderness therapy. She's just going to become more resourceful. So if she holds a grudge, boy, stay safe. Story four. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife off after getting our daughter to cut her hair off, even after being told not to? My wife is currently battling cancer, and one of the things she's told me she's struggling with the most was losing her hair. She's been given a near 100% chance of survival since we cut it early, but the chemotherapy has destroyed her hair anyway, and she has to shave what was left of it off a few weeks ago. Not long after that, she suggested we attempt to get our 17-year-old daughter, Anna, to do so as well. Anna has very long hair that she puts a lot of care into, so I felt it was inappropriate to ask her in private if she wanted to slash would be willing to do such a thing. She told me that she didn't want to cut her hair, and I figured that was the end of that. However, yesterday they came home from a girl's shopping trip, something they do every so often, and Anna had a buzzed haircut. That struck me as odd after what she'd said, so after dinner I talked to her, and she told me that my wife had said she would never forgive Anna if she didn't show her support by buzzing her head. I asked her if she was happy about it, and she said that she wasn't. When I went to bed, I brought it up with my wife, and she said, it was Anna's choice to or not, I just told her how I'd see the situation. I told her off, saying she needed to respect Anna's personal choices, and that a 17-year-old girl being against shaving her head wasn't exactly out of the ordinary. However, my wife simply said it was to show support for her. I've been sleeping on the couch since. I love my wife, and I understand that she's going through something traumatic. However, her attitude comes off as very manipulative to me, and that's not behavior I feel I can personally accept. I'm not sure if I can move past this to continue the relationship. Am I the a-hole? Okay. A. I don't think I'm allowed to give anyone advice on, you know, whether or not shaving a head is bad. Clearly, I have feelings on that. But, on a more serious note, this is messed up. Like, I understand that this mother is going through what has to be the hardest time in her life. Even with the cancer diagnosis being like, the prognosis being like, 100% you're going to make it most likely. Things should be fine. Chemo is still extremely tough on the body. Losing your hair and all that stuff can be very, very tough, you know? People are allowed to like their looks and be concerned about that. Like, you shouldn't, but you're allowed to. You're still beautiful, even if your hair falls out. That's what everyone tells me. But to tell your daughter that if she doesn't shave her head, you'll never forgive her is one of the most grossly manipulative things I have heard, especially when the daughter says they didn't want to. Like, yeah, Sometimes friends and family members will shave their head in solidarity when someone's going through chemo, 
but it's meaningful because they choose to do that. It's a show of support because it's their choice to be like, hey, even though we don't have to do that, we're doing it to support you. But to expect it and basically demand it from a 17-year-old girl, that sucks so bad. I'm sorry. You're not the a-hole person who wrote this. And frankly, I don't blame you for kind of questioning the relationship with a person who would do this to their own child. Story 5. Downstairs neighbor demands we walk normal. So we do. And she hates it. We've been living in this apartment for three years. It's old, it's cozy, the building is about 20 years old, and the appliances and wall, paint, and carpets have been replaced. The floor has not. It's painfully thin. Every step we take creaks and groans, and it's annoying. Living on the third floor, we know it's got to be even more so for whoever lives below us, so we've done our best to be mindful of their comfort and try not to make too much noise. We had a new downstairs neighbor move in a couple months ago, and she is not convinced that we are literally tiptoeing around our apartment. Every time I get home and close my door, she's banging on my floor with a broom or something. Every time I cross the living room, banging. Every time I vacuum, banging. Every time my dog chews on a bone, she bangs on the dang floor and it scares my poor dog. We've been living on eggshells trying to be courteous, but she's driving us mad with her incessant banging every time we take a step. I guess she finally had enough because she came upstairs to yell at us the other day. You are too loud. You need to be courteous and walk normally. You have neighbors, she yells. She almost looked like she was going to cry. It was disturbing. We felt bad. My husband tried to explain that, ma'am, we do our best to keep quiet, but these floors are really old and they creak. We're not stomping or jumping or running. We're living, but we'll continue to be considerate. She was not impressed with his answer and continued to argue, well, I live on the first floor before my other neighbors weren't loud like you. It's so loud and my job is so stressful, so I want you to stop stomping. I don't want to be a mean person, but I really think you're too loud. So you know what we agreed to? To walk like normal people. Okay, okay, we'll walk normally, we said. This is exactly what we had been doing, nothing different. So she still bangs on the floor and gives us nasty looks, but we are normal people who walk normally and don't stomp around. Our dog is a normal dog who chews on bones and walks from his bed to his food bowl and gets excited when it's time for walkies. We are so normal. We'll be moving in the next month, so it's no skin off my back. Hope the next tenant doesn't have kids, or maybe I do, and then she'll finally understand that we are normal people who walk normally. Maybe she'll miss us. She won't. She will continue to be a miserable, grumpy, angry person who will start fights and not realize, like seriously, how do you not just, like, like, she could see. Like, if you open the door to your apartment and just be like, Ma'am, look, we walk around. It's creaky. It's an old building. I don't know what to tell you. Like, how is that not enough for this person? So, yeah, I'm sorry. If they're going to be, like, angry and stuff like that, I would be doing river dance. I'd be tapping across that floor every single day for that last month and just be like, I don't give a damn. Hope you like these drums. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.